All right, guys, welcome back to the workshop. I finally got home from my vacation. It was awesome. I did absolutely nothing but take naps, drink beer, eat food, and wear Crocs the whole time. Not a barefoot. It was amazing. Um, but I've come back to my shop here, which kind of looks like a bit of a scene from a zombie apocalypse. The spiders have just taken over. And this place is an absolute disaster, as you can see. It's funny, when you go on vacation, none of your problems go away. They're just kind of temporarily postponed until you get back and you realize, holy crap, I still got so much work to do, so much stuff to clean up, and no one's going to do it but me. So I'm going to do a crazy, quick, little blazing cleanup so that I can tell what tools are where, because this place looks like a bomb went off. And then, you know what? I'm going to make a new project, because I don't have enough unfinished projects already going. I figured I might as well start a new one, but this one is gonna be a quick one, and it was inspired by this awesome drink that I had was a, while I was on vacation, I had my first Moscow Mule, which is like ginger beer and vodka and ice, I believe, and you have to serve it in a copper cup for it to be like legit cool. So I thought, man, this is amazing. The drink is amazing if you haven't had a Moscow Mule. Try one, and then I was like, I can make a copper cup. I'm making a copper cup because I have a piece of copper sheet sitting in my shop that I was going to make a lamp lampshade or whatever out of, but now I'm going to make a drink mug so I can get wasted on Moscow mules. So let's get to work on that. Clean up first though. All right, guys. I got a sheet of copper here. It's not a sixteenth. It's like a whatever in between a thirty-second and a sixteenth thick. Pretty sure. So it's pretty pretty heavy gauge. Plenty good for a copper mug. Plastic crap off there. Now I have no idea what I'm doing here. So this is kind of a shoot from the hip tutorial where you're gonna learn from all my mistakes. That's the best way to learn. So I'm seeing it as I'm going to take a little piece of wood here, draw a circle on it, the approximate diameter of what I need, and then I'm going to just cut out this sheet, roll it into a circular shape using uh, hammers, blocks of wood, I've got a small anvil over there, whatever, by whatever means necessary, and I want to add a lot of hammer texture to it, I want it to have like a nice peened finish, so I'm going to use a ball peen hammer. I had a smaller one, but I can't freaking find it in this mess. Uh, so I'm just going to have to use the big big daddy here. And I'm probably going to, I don't know, put it on a piece of wood and just slowly kind of peen it into a nice round shape with a nice texture. Then I'm going to cut a circular bottom and somehow bend the two together so that there's like a nice little kind of rim on the bottom edge. And then I'll solder all the joints so that it holds alcohol and other fluids. And then uh, make a handle. Let's see what it looks like when it's all done. I'm kind of pumped on this. So uh, I was cut these out and just with the material that we got, it makes sense to make two. You don't want to drink alone, right? So I'm going to make two. So I have a pair. It probably won't look exactly the same because, you know, I'm just a unique individual. I like everything to look unique. So I got a sheet. I did my little uh, two pi r to find the radius or the circumference of the circle, which was about 10 and a quarter inches with a three and a quarter inch diameter, no radius, di diameter mug. And so this should be enough to bend into a circle and match this. Now the tricky part is getting this bottom to meet this edge here. So I'm going to try and hammer a little kind of rimmed lip that maybe this can sit into and then I can solder it from the underside 
I'm just totally making this up as I go, as you can see, but I think it's gonna be awesome. So use your calculator, my thinger, to make the circles, cut out some rectangles, and start hammering stuff. It's pretty, pretty simple, really. So now I'm gonna take this over to my anvil here and might have to jerry-rig a little dog thing because I don't have any dogs to kind of hammer a little groove for that bottom to sit in along that edge. I'm thinking I should do that before I band it into a circle. But we'll find out if that's the wrong one. All right guys, so I've got the little drinking lip rounded over right there. So when you're tipping her back, you're not gonna rip your lip open on a sharp edge. And uh, the bottom edge, I've kind of 90 a little bit. So that once I uh, shape that around there, I'll have a little lip that I can solder into and that bottom will stay in there tight. So the next step is I gotta run to the store because I forgot I'm out of small cans, a little propane for my torch. Now with copper, with any metal for that matter, when you hit it a lot with a hammer, um, the molecular bonds begin to kind of deform, right? Because think of, think of metal as like tiny little crystals that are all kind of locked together. When you heat them up, those molecular bonds kind of loosen, which makes the metal soft and malleable, right? And allows you to shape it. And then when you quench it or when you let it cool, those bonds kind of bond together. More when you quench it, they'll bond back together brittle. But we want this to stay soft. So um, I've been hammering this now and the edge has become a lot more stiff. So I'm gonna go get some torch, some propane for my torch so I can heat that up, soften it again, which will allow me to kind of bend this around. I'm gonna cut a couple little circles out, the diameter I want, and then I'll just kind of hammer this into a cylindrical shape. All right, so the peen on my hammer was a little bit rusty and it was leaving kind of an uglier, not necessarily ugly, but just not the texture I was looking for. So I sanded that smooth. Make sure you got a clean peen. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, that was just too hard to resist. Um, so I'm gonna just texture this whole surface here so that it looks really awesome which is gonna take a long time and a lot of peening and I wish I had my smaller peen. <laughs> that was another joke. I wish I had a smaller peen. <laughs> oh gosh. Good times in the shop. But this, I'm just gonna to have to swing the big one, you know? Samurai problems. So let's get tapping.
right, guys. That's coming together pretty nice, I would say. Just pop that in there. I've got a little snip done on the rim there, so it folds right in flush, so I got a nice flush rim all the way around. Seems sitting decent there. I've got to pull that down. I'm thinking I'm going to probably put a couple little brass rivets in here and then maybe make the attach the handle with two rivets as well. And then next video, part two, we're going to solder up these welds or I might braze them. <laughs> Not uh, a master at either of those, but my brother-in-law is a plumber is bringing over his acetylene torch so I can braze them if I want or I've got some, some silver solder there as well. And then these little bottoms are going to drop in. I'm going to have to solder that bottom on there as well. So that's as far as we've gotten for today and it's looking pretty, pretty badass. If I do say so myself, I'm looking forward to a nice cold Moscow mule in there. So make sure you like this video, share it with your friends. Part two will be coming out tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to the Samurai Brotherhood, all the people that support this channel and make it possible so that I don't have to spam you with all sorts of ads and stuff like that. That's pretty much it for now. Check out my website for some awesome woodworking plans, t-shirts, all sorts of other swag. And until next time, guys, Samurai out.